Hi there viewers, I'm the Extraordinary Tourist and welcome to episode 3 of my video art, art diaries uh, documenting the process of creating my artwork uh, The Three Wise Colour Monkeys In this episode of my diary I'm going to show you uh, my underpainting on the artwork and then I'm going to show you uh, painting my background and then getting started on blocking in the main areas of colour on the characters and at the time of recording this video that's where the painting is at so uh, without further ado let's just get straight into it shall we so this is where we left off last week where I'd drawn the design onto the canvas in red and already filled in uh, my mid-tone red colour of my underpainting. And as you can see now I've started filling in the yellow colour which of my underpainting. The yellow is generally areas of the artwork that are going to be lighter uh, but not areas that are going to be full on white highlights. So it's any area that's sort of brighter than a mid-tone but not quite as bright as a highlight. I generally paint in yellow. Uh, these particular characters also have a lot of yellow in them in the actual designs. And the, the monkeys' faces are actually pretty close to a primary yellow, as are their shorts and the braces on their shorts, so I filled those in as well. You can see now I'm sort of moving on to my blue colour primary, which is Obviously that's for any areas of shadow. You can see all of these layers I'm not really applying very carefully at all. It's, uh, despite the fact that this is footage is sped up eight times, uh, I'm actually applying the paint fairly quickly anyway. And I sort of try to keep within the design but I'm not too fussy about it. And I'm also not too fussy about uh, the areas that I paint with shadow. It's just sort of to give me a general idea. It doesn't matter if uh, I paint an area in shadow that later won't be. But, uh, generally, I have a reasonable idea of what will be in shadow and what won't. I usually uh, just pick a, a light source. It's usually overhead from the front kind of thing and work out my shadow from there. And you can see here this is a different day. I did my underpainting and then left it to dry. And now I'm filling in my background. Uh, my backgrounds are generally very simple. I'm not a big fan of painting backgrounds so I've developed this technique of Pretty much doing one or two colours in the background that are usually a gradient from light to dark, uh, which give the characters a kind of glow and sort of focuses your eye on the characters themselves rather than on the backgrounds. So you can see here I've mixed a light blue. I'm painting that around the monkeys in the middle of the painting. And once I've done that, you'll see that I start to blend that together directly on the canvas with my dark blue around the outsides. And I usually do that by combination of just keeping the paint fairly wet and also adding water into it to help it blend a little bit better, but not too much or not so much water as that causes the paint to run, but just enough water to get the paint that's already on the canvas moving around again. And that really helps with the blending. I try to get the background completely finished. Uh, once I get through all this uh, painting of this background here, that'll pretty much be how it remains for the entire rest of the painting. You won't really see me do any other work on it other than maybe a bit of touch-up 
I might have missed an edge or something. Otherwise, this background is going to stay pretty much like this uh, for the rest of the painting. And you'll see here I'm now starting to block in all the blue on the blue monkey. And I mainly did that because I had this blue left over from the background that I'd mixed some white into because I didn't want to go with the straight primary blue on this monkey because uh, that would have been too translucent and you would see too much of the red and yellow of the underpainting coming through that. I only want to try and get a kind of hint of the underpainting coming through. I don't really want the red to be showing uh, too strongly. Same with the yellow. It's just to sort of uh, give it that sort of rough painterly feel. Uh, whereas you'll see a lot of other painters, they'll paint flat areas of colour and sort of work their way around the picture and sort of gradually colour in sections until they're completely finished, whereas I tend to work in layers. As you've seen, I've done an underpainting and now I'm filling in all my block colours. Uh, the red monkey in the middle, I already blocked some of that in with a full primary red, but I do intend to go over that with a red that has a bit of white mixed into it as well, just to help cover up some of the underpainting a little bit more. You can see here, again like when I'm doing the these base colours, I'm not going quite as quickly as I did on the underpainting and trying to sort of bring the shapes more into a finished shape and uh, not go over the edges of my lines so much but it's still very painterly because I want uh, the final thing to really look more like a painting rather than say a coloured in drawing. I want it to have some of that roughness that you get with, say, some of your um, impressionist style painting and that kind of thing. But as I get close to the end, I do sort of tighten things up. But that's where we'll leave it for this diary entry. Uh... So there you go, I hope you found it interesting, sort of watching my process and seeing how my artwork is developing and hopefully you got something out of it for your own work. By next diary I hope to have most of the color, uh, main color areas blocked in and with any luck I'll have started working on shading and detail so until next week thanks for watching.